everybody. Welcome back. Um, little technical issue this morning. So my lighting's a little off, but I will eventually get that fixed. So working a few minutes ago, now it's not working. So we'll just keep that in mind. <laughs> keep that in mind. Uh, hopefully I can fix that later. Okay, so I don't have the chat up yet. I will put the chat up in the next probably 20 minutes and we can go with whatever we want to go with as far as conversation. I like to kind of get started a little bit, kind of sets the energy for the room, different topics, what the stream focuses on, and then if there's another topic, we can most definitely go that way if it feels appropriate. So if it's not up, leave your question and we will get to it. So what do we want to discuss today? I was feeling clearing up a couple of, I don't really want to say they're misnomers because there aren't any misnomers as long as it feels right to you. Cause things will feel right to you at certain times and then not at other times. So a lot of times people will kind of get attached and I say people meaning us, <laughs> but in different parts of your journey, when you're really in your human aspects, when you're really in your human programming, you'll get very attached to certain truths. You'll see a lot of people use that. That's my truth. That's, that's what, that's what I believe. But we believe things differently all along the way. Your truth is going to change. What's aligned in one minute won't be energetically aligned in the next minute. What you believe here, you won't believe there. That's how consciousness works. Cause you always see it from a different perspective. When you see it from a different perspective, you see that, oh, it was aligned then, but it's not aligned now. That's why you tend to stop getting involved in any long-term commitment things. And when I say long-term commitment, that's going to sound like, you know, like we're non-committal, <laughs> like we're kind of wishy-washy, but we're not really wishy-washy on one point. And that's everything being vibrationally aligned. We're never going to be wishy-washy on that. And when we are wishy-washy on that, because I'm going to contradict myself, we will, you get slapped in the head in a sense energetically slapped in the head so fast, you know better than to do it again. And sometimes it can be pretty drastic what can happen if we let ourselves get out of alignment and we let realities get out of alignment. So we always have to hold that in place. But getting involved in something long-term, like I'm gonna use just support as an example here, long-term payment plans, long-term support, a lot of people, because I do a lot of stuff on different, like Twitch and YouTube and Instagram, you see a lot of people that will, I think the Patreon's really big for a lot of the YouTubers right now. And on different, you know, on different platforms, you know, support me each month or, or whatever, so much a year. I tend to not be able to do that anymore because I don't know if it's something I can support energetically. So I used to do one-time donations or multiple donations, but nothing that carries me out more than just that moment because in that moment it's aligned to do it but it might not be aligned to do something every month i could change how i feel about the content the content can change it might no longer feel aligned to support it sometimes you're supporting things for different reasons you might not be supporting what they're saying because even though they might still be running unconscious program on what they're saying but you're supporting the act that they're saying something so you're going to find you're going to change how you feel about support all along the way and what do you support what can you not support and saying you can't support it that kind of has a very negative that can have like a very negative connotation that oh i can't support that like it's something wrong with it but that's can be someone else's judgment unless you're taking it on yourself if someone says that to you and you take it personal like oh well you can't support that and you're like well now i can't really support that <laughs> Like as an example for me, I can't support any fear-based reality in a sense. So every reality that's built in a human, in a human timeline is fear-based. So when I say I can't support, support a fear-based reality, I can't support something that is supporting mass fear in a collective. You know, it doesn't matter how you're trying to spin it, how you're trying to, and even spin it, when I say spin it, when, you're in, when we're in our human aspect, we try to spin a lot of different stuff, but we don't realize we're doing it. So we're not doing, we're not doing a consciously unconscious act. And that's kind of why when you become more conscious, 
you get slapped in the head a little bit faster when you do an unconscious act because you know the difference. And you know when you're doing something that's not aligned, but you're doing it for some type of emotional reason. That's why it comes back and hits you so fast because it's so misaligned with what you're doing. You know, and sometimes we'll support stuff that people would say, oh, I can't believe you would support that. And support it whether you're doing it energetically or you're doing it with, well, energetically, money is energy. So no matter how you're choosing to support something, but we really don't think about what we support and what we don't support at the capacity we have to support it. When we're in our human aspects, we don't support something to our highest ability. And I think all of us can agree that we have a limit on what we're willing to do. You know, if, if we, if a humans in general did not have a limit on what they're willing to do, you would not see poverty in the world at all. There's enough money in the world to get rid of all of that stuff in a sense. Now the systems aren't really set up for that, but it's because you're set up in an old earth, a very human, a human aspect system. But in general, when you just take a, a different perspective to look at it, a higher perspective, you will see that there's a lot of realities where that doesn't have to exist, but because people won't give to their capacity, and capacity could be, you know, depending on how much money you have, 90% of what you have. Do you need this much money? Do you need that? Do you need to do this? Do you need to do that? And that's where you're starting to see some of this start starting to tip a little bit where people really look at what's important, but money is still a great divider. It is the one thing that people will pull back on. It is one of the biggest dividers in the collectives. And it's not so much people want to put it into, you know, it's, it's all these other things that divide us. I think money is probably for me, when I feel into a lot of these realities, money is sort of the stopgap for a lot of them. People will do, but so much, but when it comes to their money, they will always stop. When you're in your human reality, you will always stop shorter than what you could do because there's a fear. You have this innate feel you have to keep the money. You know, you have to save the money. You have to have, there's all these constructs in place. And the more you start expanding your consciousness, you realize that those constructs don't make a lot of sense in the higher perspective when you look at them. Because technically money is infinite, just like energy is infinite. It, you can't, it's just, you can't really create or destroy it in a sense. It's always going to be there. But if we have a sense we have to save it, we kind of ingrain that in that we have to have this much because we have to live here. We have to have this. And you get to a society where people are treated differently based on what they have or what they don't have. And it repeats over and over and over again. You know, the cycles, because it's ingrained in the DNA and the more it gets ingrained in your DNA, the more you will revert back to it. So you hear a lot of people making very blanket statements. Oh, what I'd never do that. I'd never do that. I never support that. I, I would never say that. But until you're in certain realities, certain collectives, you don't really know what you would do. <laughs> I think a lot of the COVID realities sort of showed us what we would do or what we would not do, what we're willing to step away from, what we're not willing to step away from when our health is in jeopardy. Because that's a big one for a lot of people too, health and money. But I find more people divide on money. More people have an innate fear over the money thing. I call it the money thing because it's a big shift. When you start shifting your consciousness, money is a big shifter. You start to look at money completely differently. You do not look at money the same way. You do not get money and think it's for yourself. <laughs> you realize it's for whatever you're supposed to do. And that might be, and a lot of people, when you say that, especially, and you have the distortion of that where people say, okay, I'm supposed to give it all away. And that's not, in a sense, it just goes to support whatever you're trying to do. And if you need to live in a certain place to do that, then that's what the money's for. If you don't need to live in a certain place to do that, then that's not what the money's for. The more, normally you'll see people, the more expanded they get energetically, the more conscious they become, you need more space, <laughs> you know? So they start living in bigger places where a lot of people, if they're on a the different extreme of that will look at them and go, oh, you have to live in such a nice place or such a big place. That seems counterintuitive to what this is supposed to be. Because if you're in service to humanity, you're supposed to be, you know, 
not having all these things. These things aren't supposed to matter, but why do you have all these things? So you see a lot of backlash in the spiritual communities. And I'm gonna, I don't really like that word very much. I feel like that it's, it's kind of everyone's path. At some point you enter into the spiritual community to become more spirit in form. And it's just sort of a conduit to what we're trying to get to with ascending our consciousness. It's not the end of the journey. A lot of people think, oh, that's the end of the journey. That, that's just part of the journey. It can be part of your awakening if you get in a really distorted spiritual community. It can be part of your ascension to see, wow, that doesn't feel right to me. So some people get in certain spiritual communities and think, okay, that's that feels right. And other people get in there and go, it doesn't feel right. Like it doesn't feel conscious, even though it says it's spiritual. Why does it feel different to me? Like, why doesn't it feel like it should blend together? <laughs> you know, why is it different? Because they're two separate things. You can have spiritual people that are not conscious. That can be doing everything completely unconscious, not to judge not to judge where they are. Because a lot of times when we say that, people go, oh, it's a judgment in there. It's just saying it's a, they're in a different space in their journey. And a lot of times they can get kind of, I don't want to say stuck, because you're never really stuck, but you can get sort of pegged in a certain place because you've been successful in that place. What you would call a human would look at it and say that's successful. Whereas when you get into higher dimensional realms, success is judged differently. So when you try to judge the success of one thing by the success of, some, of a different collective, it doesn't really mesh. Like you can't really look at what was successful when you were in your human realities and then take that into the higher dimension and say, okay, now that's how I would measure success. And that's where a lot of people can get sort of stuck because like really, really never stuck. I'm going to use it as an example because that's a word people resonate with when they say I feel kind of stuck. It's not so much you're stuck. You just don't want to do what you have to do to move on. You're, you're moving. You're just moving slower because you're kind of holding fast in it, waiting for it to kind of fall apart. So eventually you're going to move through it. You're just going to move through it at a much slower, slower pace because you're kind of going to go through the distortion instead of letting the distortion move through you energetically, or you move through it energetically is probably a better way to say it. You're not really moving through it energetically. You're going to go through the physical reality of it. So you're going to wait for it to collapse because you don't know a different way to do it. But eventually all that stuff does collapse because it has to be held to the highest. And a lot of that stuff is not the highest. Anything that promises you something, it's not the highest aligned of anything. Because you can't really promise anyone anything. Because depending on where people are is how much success they're going to have. I'm going to use the word success. It probably is not the word, but it's the word I got. You're going to promise someone something that if they're not in the right space in their journey, it's not going to work the way they think it's going to work. You know, it's just not, it doesn't mean it's not there to open them up. A lot of us get started in that stuff because it just opens you up to something else besides the physical reality. It opens you up to something different. It's not the end of the journey. It's part of the journey. Some people see it as the whole thing, right? Like, oh, this is it. I've made it. <laughs> you know, I, I have a connection. And you can have a connection, but the difference between having a connection and living from that connection every day, every interaction, every person you bring in to your life. I think I said it a couple, maybe last stream. Like, I don't care the choices people make. If it's someone I see every six months, someone I see once a week for one hour, you know, someone I just, you know, pass by in the street. I don't care about the decisions they make. And I don't say I don't care from a point of detachment from humanity. I care I care for humanity very deeply, but their decisions right now are their decisions. And they're their decisions based on their plan, their ascension journey, their awakening journey. It might not be time for them to be in a lot of these places yet. So my role in those situations is gonna be very different than my role in another situation because these are not in my life to affect my energy field enough where I'm going to expect the highest from them.
because that's not where they are and they're not here every day. But when we start bringing people in, we have to look at that stuff. We have to look at every choice they make, every karmic decision they make. Every, because when you bring in someone else, you're taking on all that karma of that person. It's going to affect your feel. And a lot of people don't understand that. You're taking on that person's decisions. You're taking on that, those pers that person or those persons, their karmic timelines too. You're now in the middle of them if you choose to bring that person in. Now, sometimes we can love people very deeply, but we see all that. And we can also then send them on their way. Because no matter what we do to kind of shift them into a different place, they're not ready to go there yet. That doesn't mean they might never be ready to go there yet. They're just not ready to go there right now. If they're not ready to go there right now, we don't really have a reason to be there. We have a reason. We always have a reason to be there, but we might not have a reason to be there long term. Being in there long term is a different, is a different animal so to speak. You know, we don't have a reason to be involved in this and they don't need to be here because it's not going to contribute anything. They've got their own stuff to work out. So your roles in different situations change. How you support the situation will change. Sometimes you just listen to people. Sometimes you try to shift it. Sometimes you, you know, there's nothing you're going to say that's going to shift it. So you just are there. And people kind of underestimate that. Humans always want to say something. They feel like they have to say something. They don't know. They feel like that's the only thing they can add to a situation is to say something about it. You know, I have to give my opinion. I have to tell someone how I feel about it. You know, but normally we do that because we need someone to hear how we feel about something. You know, it's important for us. We want to say it. We want to get it off our chest. It's important for us to do that. But it might not be important long term for what we're trying to do. But our human wants to say it. If you feel like you have to say something, your human, your ego wants to say something. It's not something, your soul never has to say anything. Now that doesn't mean there are parts of the journey where you're supposed to speak up because you never spoke up before. So there are parts of the journey where, yeah, I need to talk. You know, I'm supposed, to, I'm supposed to speak up here because I've never done that before. And that's something I'm supposed to do. But that's not all the time. And that's going to be independent on where you fall on that. If you've never spoken up, then yeah, you might need to speak up. If you speak all the time, it's time to shut up. Because you're going to go the opposite. You're always going to go the opposite to try to balance things out. You see that in the collectives. Very right now where... Before, kind of anything that was said was fine. Now, everything that's said is very much, I want to say scrutinized. You know, it's very much magnified where you really feel like you can't say anything. Eventually, everything kind of meets back in the middle again, but it's trying to get that balance back where everything was fine. Now, nothing is fine. And then you have to find the balance. And that's really what you're always going to be trying to do, finding the balance. In the beginning, whatever your human did, you do the opposite. When you're in your human aspect and you were in these situations, you would go the opposite way. You would never sit there in a sense and do the same thing again because you know you're not supposed to do the same thing again. And there's some situations we find ourselves in again and we're like, no, I'm not ready for this yet. I don't think I could, I don't know if I can balance this one out yet. So most of the time we don't get presented with them because it's not what, it's not what we're supposed to be doing. So we won't even really see those things right away. We'll be sort of taken, taken out of those situations because we're not supposed to be in them. But we don't really know. We don't really know until we're in it. And I think that's probably the point of this very long intro. Until you're in it, you're not going to know exactly what you're supposed to do. And sometimes you can see things coming. And I think I've talked before about a lot of times in the beginning and even now you can see, I think I see things farther off in the dream state. I'm a little more open to things that are much farther off, even though you kind of see things and you think, okay, maybe in your waking state. Cause if you're more conscious in one state, you're more conscious in all the states. It's not just one state. It's not just like, oh, I'm conscious 
And I'm really conscious when I'm asleep and not so much when I'm awake. That's why you kind of start working in both states. Dream state's just a little bit easier in the beginning because your mind's not in the way of it, but you start opening up in all the states. But you might see something and say, okay, that's gonna come. But when it comes, you might say, oh, it's not aligned anymore. But when I saw it two years ago when I was sleeping, it felt aligned, but now this doesn't feel right. It might be another six months, might be another six years. It can take a long time for these alignments to happen. And our human does not like that. A human does not like the time it takes for everyone to be energetic aligned. It wants to rush the alignment. It wants to push the alignment. It doesn't want to sit there and say, okay, let me, let me see if I can set back. I think I called it the art of restraint and I, I didn't, that's not mine. I read that somewhere, <laughs> but it is true. We don't have the restraint to let it play itself out because it's not easy to do that. There are some things you might have to let play out for years and you're just like, wow, that seems like a great reality. I can see that whole reality, but I'm going to have to wait years for it to play out because it's just not here right now. It's just not ready yet. Even though our human wants it to be, because it looks like, oh, that could be great. And it could be if it's vibrationally aligned. But in that moment, if it's not here yet, it's not vibrationally aligned. And that can be the hardest thing to get through our minds when we're looking at different realities. And when you have the access to see so many different ones, you kind of can get blinded by the sense of, oh, that one looks great. Oh God, that one looks great. Why isn't it here? It looks like that would be such a fun reality to take part in that, that person. We could fit this reality could be beautiful. This reality could be beautiful. But if it's not in your reality right now, it's not aligned. It's not aligned with your current vibration. You shift your vibration, it might come in. But if it's not coming in, and I mean coming in very easily, you'll be surprised when things line up how quickly they come in. It's almost comical, comical, comical. But you just laugh like, oh, that was easy. I thought that would take longer. There's so many things that I, I don't want to say waited for, but in a sense, you, you're kind of like, oh, when that reality gets here, you know, when it materializes here and then it gets here, you're like, oh, I, you take yourself to like one place. You're like, I'm supposed to go to this place. I have to be there. And like, I just have to be there at this place tonight. And then it's just there. And you're like, oh, that was, even though it felt like it took a long time. Actually, by the time I really got in the energy of it, it was really fast. <laughs> but we don't want to wait for that. We're not really into the waiting for anything. That's just not our jam. That's not the human's jam to have to wait for something. So how I try to temper my human aspect with that, you just have to remind yourself, it's not going to work out the way you want it to work out. If it's not here right now and it's not aligned, if it was aligned, it would be here. If it's not aligned, it's not going to be. The more you try to push it or rush it, you're not going to get the one that's aligned. You'll get, well, I'm going to take that back. You might get one, but it's not aligned to the one you want it to be aligned to. It's not aligned to the highest reality you've seen. It's going to be aligned to some karmic reality because you're trying to push it. And if we're trying to push it, there's a lack there. There's a fear there. That's a karmic timeline, and it's not going to end up the way you want it to end up. And that's, so will you work through programming going through that timeline? Yes. Might you at some point get to the other timeline? Yes. <laughs> Perhaps. But it's going to be a much rougher road. If you, unless you just can set back, do what you feel like you're supposed to do. Because there is a lot of doing here. Even though a lot of people think you don't have to when you get to certain levels of consciousness. But there's a lot of doing. It just might not be a doing where you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. I'm going to go do this. Or, that makes sense. I'm going to go do this. They're not linear. You do the weirdest stuff sometimes and you're like, okay, <laughs> doesn't, I don't, don't understand why, but I guess it doesn't matter why I have to go do this, but I have to go do this. And that happens. Sometimes it can be, sometimes you'll get, no, you'll feel like I have to go do this. I have to go this, go to this place at this time. I normally don't ever do this, but I'm supposed to do this. And you just know you're supposed to be there. It's on your mind. You got to go. You can't get it off your mind. And you go, and sometimes we might not have a great experience. We're like, why do I have to go here and experience this? This is bizarre. Why do I have to do this? But a lot of times we have to do this. Because we can also be testing ourselves to can we be at our highest place even when everything around us isn't at its highest place? You're put in a more stressful situation, you know, 
can you still come from your highest place? Are you able to do that? I think I called them test runs before. Like, it's just a test run, you know? Can you do that? Can you be in a situation where you're kind of getting a little pissed off <laughs> because everything has gone sideways since you walked into the space, this reality I just walked into, can I still come from my highest place? So sometimes we're gonna go through that quite a bit, but we have to prove that we can handle those situations. We have to prove that we can always come from our highest place. And that's not easy for our human aspect. It, we're gonna go, you will find, and sometimes, you know, when we work on ourselves all the time, a lot of us work on ourselves all the time and it's programming and we're trying to clear this and clear that. It's like, gee, I just wanna take some time off from Ascension, it's kind of exhausting. <laughs> We just go do one thing, uh, you know, go out to dinner, go whatever. I don't think about Ascension, <laughs> go watch a movie. I don't want to think about it. I'm just going to go back to what it was like before all this stuff started, you know, before the journey started. Let me just take two or three hours off and not really worry about it. It'll all be here when I get back. All this shit I have to work through, it'll all be here. No one's going to do it until I get back. It's going to be right here. And you will find it is kind of easy sometimes to kind of get, go back into not caring about any of that stuff. But you also find that when you do that, you still, you still know you have a certain responsibility if something presents where you need to shift that reality for someone. Even if you are gonna go in and say, okay, universe, I'm gonna take the night off. I just wanna sit here. I'm gonna watch a baseball game. I don't want anyone coming to talk to me about anything heavy, <laughs> unless they wanna talk about nature. You know, in this baseball game I'm watching, I'm not really interested in anything else but that at this moment. And sometimes that's what you get. You just will get people who are just like, you know, no one really cares about anything else but just that. And sometimes you'll get sort of something else and you have to show, okay, I want to take the night off, but obviously this is not the night off I'm supposed to get, so we're going to then shift it. Because technically when you're anywhere, your presence is going to shift people. And a lot of times I go certain places because I know I have to go. I have an appointment with somebody, even though if I don't know who they are. <laughs> I know I got to be there at a certain time. And then I just go and I'm sitting there. And I'll usually say, and I say, I'll be like, okay, come on. Whoever I got an appointment with, I'm kind of getting tired. So let's, let's go, you know. So I'll just kind of sit there and wait. But energetically, I'm like, okay, come on. <laughs> Whoever's supposed to meet with me tonight. Whoever I need to talk to, let's speed it up. So, and then usually after that, once I say that, because I'll set for a while and kind of get a lay of the energy of the room and just kind of, you know, kind of lay back and watch everything. And then I'll be like, all right, let's get it going. <laughs> Whoever I'm supposed to meet here, come on, show up. Usually it takes about five or 10 minutes and someone comes and sits next to you and a conversation ensues. Or you see someone you, you've seen before, you know, and a conversation ensues, but... You can kind of say that sometimes if you know you're supposed to be somewhere and you're like, okay, well, come on, let's bring it on. What am I, what am I here for? You know, because I'm ready to go home if the person's not going to show up, but they always show up. They just don't know that they had an appointment with you. <laughs> but it's, you know, you kind of sit there for a while. And usually you can kind of tell who it is. The energies, you kind of ping on certain people in certain places you'll go and you kind of know, oh yeah, okay, that's why I'm here. I might not actually talk to them tonight, but it's just energetically, that's why I'm here. So you'll kind of know, which is kind of cool and fun when we start to play with this stuff and you start to play with how much you already know, how much you can see ahead of time, how the realities are trying to line up, even though they're not quite aligned yet. But patience really is the virtue. And our, unfortunately, or fortunately, our human's not patient. It is not a patient aspect. It is it wants it now, it sees something, it says, oh, that looks cool, let's go do that right now. Even though it's not meant to be right now. Sometimes the easiest ones in that are the ones when you look back, when you didn't realize what you were doing, that you were in situations with people, you saw people, you know, I, I would just use an example. I saw someone on TV and I was like, wow, oh, that kind of person jumps out at me. But you don't really think anything else of it. And maybe two or three years later, they moved to where you live. And you might see them, you're like, oh, that person still kind of jumps out at me. But you can see all along how the, it was starting to align up energetically. But because you didn't have the sight to see what it could be, and you're bogged down by a lot of the human stuff, 
you didn't see how long it took it to play out. It might have taken three or four years for it to play out, but because you had no, you're human, you had no conscious thought of that in a sense. You didn't see the timeline, you weren't tracking the timeline, you weren't keeping, I don't want to say tabs on the timeline, but in a way you kind of are keeping tabs on the timeline. Listening when people talk about where they are, even if they're not talking to you, you kind of get an idea, you know, of where everybody is. You're keeping tabs on that stuff. You sat there and you can go back and see certain people. It took a long time to come into your life because it wasn't a line, wasn't a line. But because you didn't have that and you weren't as energetically plugged in, you didn't see how long those things took. But if you look back, you'll see so many of those things and oh my gosh, how long that took. But because I don't even want to use the word attachment. I keep getting that word to say, but I don't love that word because we're not supposed to get attached to the realities. But if we're trying to rush them along, we, we do have some type of attachment to them. I would say, I guess probably it's fair. Because if we see them, we're like, oh, that's cool. I want that one. Or that one looks really cool. I want that reality. We do, we can kind of get attached to it. And that's something we constantly have to work on. We can see a lot of cool ones, but we can't get attached to them. So if I find myself getting attached to one, I have to start sort of severing the cords to that reality. And you can always say, you know, that one's cool. I'll take a different, I'll take a better one than that. I don't, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. As long as it's awesome, I don't really care what it is. I don't really have any attachment beyond that as long as it's awesome. So, okay, on that, I'm gonna open up our chat for a second and see if we have anything that we can, that we need to address. If anyone has anything they wanna address. Uh, oh, <laughs> I do have one topic. We're going to talk uh, mental health, which I think is a topic that's a little misconstrued from human perspectives. Like what exactly is mental health? And and this is going to probably sound a little, I don't ever support, I'm going to not say that ever because that's not entirely true. I normally do not support any type of mental health things. And there's a reason I don't. Or you would listen to this and go, oh, it's all about mental health. It's not human mental health. <laughs> because the soul really doesn't have a mental component to it. A lot of the mental health stuff tries to get you to accept the human realities. And sometimes we're not supposed to accept the human realities. Now there are parts of your process where you might utilize different things in a mental health community, in the mental health community, to get you out of some of the human stuff. That's gonna sound contradictory, but I think if you've ever been in those things, you'll understand. If you're in those moments, it's easier to understand it, where it could be important to certain things. A lot of people certain mental health prescription drugs because in that moment it's aligned and that's not to say it's always going to be it's not to say it's never going to be but what are you trying to work through to stay in I think that's why a lot of the mental health stuff what is it trying to conform you to is it trying to say oh yeah well that doesn't fit into this mold so that's not really healthy because when you start getting into that stuff that's when you have to look at how you feel about it and where you are in your process. There'll be different points of your process where you would look like a crazy person to people. Crazy. <laughs> they will not understand what you're doing. And that's not because they're mean spirited or you're mean spirited. It's just they're in a different consciousness than you are in. So if they're in a different consciousness than you are in, they're not going to understand what you're doing. They're just not going to. They're not gonna understand why you're doing it. They're not gonna understand why. Why don't you wanna be around people? Are you depressed? You should wanna be around people. But when you start a lot of your soul journey and your ascension journey, you don't wanna be around people. You're trying to get your own energetic in line. You don't need someone else's in there. But that might not look right to someone else. That might not look right to a human medical community, a human mental community. It doesn't mean you're not in the right space but that's really when we have to look at okay what i have heard so many bizarre what i would look at as a bizarre thing said 
in a mental health community. <laughs> and you, some of this stuff you're like, okay, you know, so you really have to look at what feels right to you. A lot of people will get into a mental health community and they might get into meditation. So that might've been how they got opened up to meditation. It was a line for them to go through it that way or um, start to see something might not be healthy for them, right? And I would look at that, it might not be a line for you. You know, I would say it a different wording, but it's kind of the same thing. So it might be parts of the journey where it's appropriate, but other parts where am I trying to get stuck in a system that is not soul aligned? And only you are going to know that. So if anyone tells you they know more than you, they don't. And it, like, it, that's the most important thing to remember when you're trying to connect with yourself. I don't care how bad crazy you might look in a lot of this, because there will be parts when you do and people are not gonna understand. They're just not. And they're not supposed to because it's not their time to understand. Plus they speak all, people speak your fears back to you. So they're not going to understand. But they're supposed to say those things so you can get through, oh, I must feel that way. So if someone says something to you and it kind of strikes you, you know somewhere you feel that way. And they're just saying it back to you. They're mirroring it back to you. Like, yeah, you're acting crazy. And then you're like, holy shit, am I acting crazy? They might be right. I might be acting crazy. What am I doing? Did I just throw away a, you know, a career that took me 20, 25 years to build to do this? Someone would say, that's nuts. Why are you doing that? It might seem nutty to other people. <laughs> You know, because it doesn't conform with certain collectives, with a human consciousness, the way a human consciousness understands. But human consciousness doesn't really understand a soul consciousness. So you have to look at where you are and what you're actually listening to. And if it feels aligned. Some days you might feel like, oh, I'm supposed to do this. No, I'm supposed to do this today. No, I feel like being a mermaid today. Oh, today I'm going to be an angel. Today I'm going to go do this. Today I'm going to go do this. And it can feel very disjointed. You can feel disjointed. You'll sleep a lot. I think I went through that in another stream where the body knows what it wants to do. When people are you know, depressed, they're very disconnected from themselves. That's what's driving them there. That's why they're sleeping. Because when you're sleeping, you're connecting. They're trying to reconnect. That's why they're sleeping all the time. Now, someone might look at that and go, oh, that's not right. You shouldn't do that but their body is trying to do something for them. Their body's trying to reconnect them. Now they might be doing other things that are keeping them disconnected, but their body is trying to connect them back up. Because when we sleep, we do connect back up. We just might not be in a space to, sometimes we need, to do... I don't like the word need. Sometimes we'll do things because it's what we're supposed to do because we feel like we're supposed to do them in that moment. And that's probably gonna loop me back to the beginning of this, but it might not be forever. It's normally not forever. It might be aligned in that moment because they're gonna say something that's gonna open up something else. But this person is not the person I'm supposed to listen to forever. It's just in this moment, they're an aspect of me. They're always gonna be an aspect of you. It's just what, what aspect are they? Are they in that moment acting as a higher aspect of you? Or are they acting as a very human aspect of you? What aspect do you have in front of you when you're talking to someone, especially when you're talking to someone who you're giving, I'm going to say giving your power to, because in a way you are giving your power to, you're giving your power to what someone else is saying. You're listening to someone else because they might know more than you do, right? Which technically no one really does, but in that moment, they might be telling you something that's going to be important later on. It's all kind of all in a lot of codes and metaphors when you're talking about the soul. Uh... And a question mark. <laughs> Explain your question mark and I'll try to answer the question. <laughs> it's very ambiguous. Um, so that's why when you talk about mental health, you have to look at it from all different points of view. It's not just as simple. If you're trying to ingrain back into a human consciousness, it's probably not for you if you don't feel like it's for you. Because what the soul consciousness is going to do and what your higher consciousness, your higher, your higher aspects are going to tell you to do is not what would conform with any human reality or what a human would consider to be mentally healthy. It's just not. It's going to seem odd. Doesn't mean in some parts of the journey, it might not feel appropriate for you. 
That's for everyone to figure out. Does this feel appropriate for me? Is this what I'm supposed to do? If this is not what I'm supposed to do, then I'm just gonna say this is, I'm not here anymore, it doesn't matter. There'll come to a point where you don't entertain any consciousness that's any human-based consciousness. You just don't, you don't listen. It doesn't matter, it's not true, it doesn't ring real. It's just like you start to see through the whole matrix of what's keeping everyone in it. And a lot of times it's just the fear to conform with what's normal. And a lot of this might not be normal. None of it really is normal. <laughs> None of it's normal at all, but it's not supposed to be because you're used to our human-based normal. When you start ascending your consciousness, you're not human anymore. Your body morphs, your body starts to change the template. Your consciousness is not a human consciousness. Your consciousness becomes something else. It becomes your higher aspects. It starts to become your galactic aspects. So when you listen to, especially when you have a lot of humans, I say humans, but just that human aspect talking, it's in control of that, you know, it's in control in that moment, technic, sort of, but it's really never in control. The soul's always in control, even though it might not be anchored in the body. I think I've said that before. Most people's souls are kind of outside the body. They're kind of in their field, but they're not, but they're not really in the body. It's too much crap in the body. It really can't be in there. That's when the more crap they go through, the more the soul can go into the body. The more crap they go through, the more the crap gets broken down and released from the body. And then the soul kind of, kind of starts stepping in there a little bit, but your body really wasn't hundred percent set up to house all those higher aspects, to house your soul aspects or your galactic aspects. That's why the body is just going through so many different issues, which kind of leads back to, you know, you go to the mental, mental health community, then you're going to go through a medical, you know, more physical medical community. And you have to decide if that's aligned anymore. Does that make sense to me? Is what, is that, oh, well, that means this. Does it? I don't know if it does anymore. To me, this means, this does, A, B doesn't equal Z anymore. A, B equals Z. And that's it. And you can't really explain it. You can, but if someone's not in a space to really, absorb, they'll always absorb it, but they might not 100% understand it in that moment. They will later. That's why we always need to share when we, we feel like we're supposed to share something in a sense. Because there's a reason we're supposed to. It's usually not the reason you think, but it's the reason you're supposed to. So I think on that note today, I'm going to end this. I think it was a good stream. I enjoyed it. Okay, so enjoy. Bye.